Hi guys and welcome in the third day of our challenge One Week, One Bot. And for this last features video, we'll talk about features that will highlight market regime, trend and if the price is ranging or not. So let's begin now with the first features, the directional change features. And for this one, we'll have a bit more cut. So I will not explain all of that because it will take a very long time. I will first explain the intuition. Again, you can find the documentation of this feature on the ML Fin Lab. Okay, so it can be interesting to read the documentation to have more information. The goal is very simple. In the directional change features, you have very often the DC event and the OS event. An OS event is just the period between two DC events. And what is a DC event is when you have a percentage of variation from the lowest price to the current price equal to a certain percent. For example, 2%. If from A to B you have 2%, it means that you have a DC event and it changed the market regime. Now we are in an upward trend, okay? But what is important to understand is that these features can be good to create a signal. Maybe, I don't know, we need to test it tomorrow, but it can be interesting to create a signal because just as features like that, it will not bring a lot of information. Why? Because, for example, during the DC event, we can't say that we are in a DC event because let's try to compute it ticks by sticks, like in the reality. You are in A, you make your condition, okay? You are not above this certain threshold. You continue there, you are not above this certain threshold. So you don't have this DC event for now, okay? And it's only there that you can say, okay, the trend has changed. And so the upward trend begins there, but it ends also there because you need to have a DC event in the other way to say that the upward trend is ended. So in other world, for example, there, you begin an upward trend and the end of the upward trend is there. That's why using these features just like this is not clearly enough. Okay. You can, when you see that at the beginning, I said, okay, why I just don't wait a DC event and I open my position at the open of the DC event and I close it at B for example. But because it's not possible because you do not have this information at the beginning of the DC event, okay? It will be too easy to earn money if you had it. And if you want to know more, you just have to read this documentation. There are also a book, but you need to pay it. So I think this articles are clearly enough to understand. So now let's go on the notebook and see a bit visually our different market regime. Obviously, red is for a downward trend and green is for an upward trend. And you can see that on this graph, on this period, you have very good predictions with the different market regime, okay? We can change maybe, I will run it from the beginning and we can change maybe this from 1000 to 2000. And now, as we can see, this features is not correct anymore. And we have clearly the opposite. For example, there we are in green, but we are in a downward trend. Then the opposite, okay? During the red, we earn money. Then during the green, we lose money and so on. So it's not a good features like that. Again, I, I repeat, maybe you can put it into an ML model as input and it can bring you information, but like that, it's impossible to use it. Really, I insist. And for us, we just need to translate this green and red into zero and one or minus one and one, something like this. So to do it, I will just create this small function, DC market regime. And if we are in a downward trend, okay, for these features, I will take zero. If we are in an upward trend according to these features, we take one and then we run and we just have to check if we have the correct color when we have one and when we have minus one. 
For example, from 600 to 800, we should be in red. We are. After that, we are in green. Okay, that's good. Okay. So we have correctly implemented our directional change features. But again, I don't really like it as features. You can use it. It can bring a lot of information depending on the period. But I would really like to check if it can be a good signal to predict in the next part. Now, the second feature that we need to talk about today is the market regime from the comma function. It will be the same as for simple moving averages. We take two moving averages. If the fast moving average is above the slow moving average, we are in an upward trend. And if it's the opposite, a downward trend. So we know already this function. Now we use it and we do just a difference between the slow moving average and the fast moving average. If this difference is negative, it means that this value is greater than this one. And so we are in an upward trend. If it's the opposite, we are in a downward trend. I just plot both, but we can just plot, for example, the difference. And after that, I will plot the trend. So I put all this code properly to create a function. And if I run it and I plot the comma trend, we have, well, as we want, minus one and one, depending on the trend where we are. So it's a very interesting feature. No needs to give more explanation, I think. So let's switch directly to the last one, the rolling ADF test. First of all, we need to explain very quickly what is an ADF hypothesis test. This test will allow us to understand if a time series is stationary or not. For example, there you have a stationary time series, okay? It means what? It means if we talk financially, this time series is ranging. And that's exactly what we want to understand. We don't want to talk about upward trend, downward trend. What we want to know is it is ranging, yes or no. And we will use a simple ADF test to find that. So we just have to use stats models to import the ADF test. The function is really simple. We just create a loop. As for the rolling volatility, we create our ADF value for the period. For example, there, I will create an ADF period for each row, taking into account the 50 previous values, okay? So as look back, we have 50 values. And there, as you can see, we'll have the output. But we need to understand how to interpret it. And it's very simple. If the value is close to zero or positive, it means that the time series is not ranging. It is trending. But if the value is negative below two, two, five, three, it means that we are ranging. For example, there we we need to be really careful with the um, x axis there because there it begins at six at zero and there at sixty. So if we look between one hundred twenty and one hundred forty, we see that we are ranging there. Okay, because we have a fifty values look back. So if we look there, we are well ranging. Obviously, there are always a slippage, okay, when we can say that we are ranging from the rolling ADF and finally we are trending. But it is, in my opinion, a good feature because not a lot of technical indicators practicing use it. So you will have a small edge against them, okay, because obviously the more you use an unknown features, the more the odds to find something interesting increase. So that was all for this video. Again, don't forget that you can have a features description for each of them in the features folder. Tomorrow, we will begin to talk about the signals. And don't forget also to read each day the notes, okay? I just write what I'm thinking about and it can be interesting for you to read them to understand how I thought about each problem, okay? But I think I will need to take more notes from today because when we work on signal strategies, you take obviously more notes than just creating new features. So we'll stop there 
and see you tomorrow to talk about the signal generation.